Welcome back. You are watching the Sunday footy show. As we mentioned earlier, Damian Barrett will be heading off on Tuesday on that last flight out of Melbourne to the Gold Coast along with uh, AFL royalty, really. But you've got Gil on board, Eddie's on that Eddie's flight, on I think. Robo. I know that we've got... Gary Ablett. Uh, Gary Ablett. Alicia Muling from our newsroom yes. here is going up to join Ed and uh, Woolley. And uh, Lloydo, Lloydo showed us that the coaches are in raptures. The mere prospect of you joining them up there, Damo. One of which joins us right now, and Chris Scott, the Geelong Football Club Ooh. senior coach. Good morning, Scotty. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, very exciting times. Hey, Scott, I mean, has that been the talk among the coaches that you know Damo's about to hit town? <laughs> well, I must admit, it has it has got a mention. Um, I did hear that um, Damo was a bit flat that he was left off the initial invitation list, so it's. Good to finally have him on board. <laughs> okay, good stuff. All right, let's take a look at the board now, this being the scoreboard, and it's a pretty good one for the Cats. It was good. It was a slow start. Tommy Hawkins kicked a couple. Gary Rowan was terrific, particularly last quarter. We've gone through in detail about Paddy Dangerfield's night. Uh, Jason Johannesson missed an easy goal. Norton flew for everything, but it was all about the Cats for pretty much three quarters. And uh, just wanted to ask you, Scotty, First quarter, what did you think of it? I mean, obviously, the last three quarters was outstanding, but they did get the jump on you, six goals to nothing. Yeah, they sure did, Brownie. They played really well. Um, we contributed to it a little bit. A couple of bad turnovers um, gave them some pretty good looks. But for the most part, it was just a credit to the way they were playing around the ball. We, we had some chances going forward um, and couldn't take them. And they clearly are a team when they get the momentum there. They're very hard to stop there. I mean, we all know about their, their midfield. They've got stars everywhere. Um, hard runners. But, and, and then Norton and um, Bruce were threatening up forward as well. So, yeah, we were under some serious pressure. I thought it was really important that Grind Myers kick those first two goals uh, to get you going. I mean, you were 36 points down. You need to get that one to start. But for a young player to have the composure that he did to kick those two goals, to kick start your comeback was terrific. Yeah, absolutely. What you're really looking for as much as anything um, after, you know, coming, trying to come back from a deficit like that is just some hope and it can be really deflating when you work hard to get some chances and, and don't knock them over. So that was crucial uh, early in the, in the second quarter, that's for sure. Scotty, I'm interested in your thoughts about the mental side of the game and, and how long you can, can be up for as a team. You guys have been sensational and do you believe there's going to be weeks like that's the first quarter without taking a lot from the dogs? You're going to be flat at some periods, particularly after four and five day breaks? Yeah, I don't think we've seen any team um, maintain the rage all season um, so far. It's obviously um, a real challenge and you know I think everyone's going to have their moments, whether they're just um, because of the short breaks or, or just a bit of general flatness um, and I think the other thing that you know is probably underrated a little bit is just how even the competition is and you're going to have um, you know moments even within games when the opposition has things on, on their terms and I don't think there's a team out there when when they get in that situation that are easy to stop. I'm interested in your philosophy around sort of resting players and the footy frenzy and all of that yeah you haven't seemed to have done that um, is that different to what you thought you would have done prior to the, the crazy amount of games in a short space of time? And how have you managed it? Yeah. Well, we actually have cycled uh, a few through. We, we had, I think it was five games in 20 days or 21 days. And generally we made three or four Which changes, uh, most of those those games. And, and, and even with the longer break last week, we... Um, we rested one or two and, and another sort of one or two guys that were um, probably more for injury purposes, although they, you know, I guess at a stretch they could have played. So now we're getting into the stage of the season where continuity is arguably more important than, than even freshness. And so we're working on a bit of cohesion there, but I think we're still going to have situations where you know, Joel Selwood's probably the, the example of a guy who's really important to us. And, you know, we, we might sacrifice a bit of cohesion just to make sure he's cherry ripe. Hey, Scotty, uh, Zach Tui, he's one of your favourites. You like the Irishman and they've been very good for you. But he was in the wars the other night, a couple of hits to the guts and they had sore ribs. One, how are his ribs? And also, did he find his mouth guard? Because he, he threw that about 100 metres at one stage. Yeah, he was, I think we're seeing the vision now. He was pretty frustrated when it came off. Um, he was reunited with a post-game. I saw the uh, picture of that. Uh, but he, he, look, he's as tough as they come. He's a warrior. Um, yeah. he's, I'm assuming he's a bit sore uh, now, but uh, there was never any suggestion that he couldn't keep going, even though 
Um, you know, every time he went back out there, he seemed to cop <laughs> another one. But yeah, he's, he's played a lot of games in a row throughout his career. Uh, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic for us. Chris, with Gary Ablett going up on Tuesday to the, the, the hub and a requirement to, to quarantine for 14 days, it leaves the round 18 game only for him. Do, do you lock him into that game as we speak? It's a long way out, so we'd need to um, wait a little bit and make an assessment on how he's going, um, how the team's going, all those sort of things. But I think at face value, um, you know, we would probably play him. Yeah, I think that's, that's, it's fair to say that's the plan at the moment. He's probably the second most famous person coming up on that flight. <laughs> hey, uh, we, we like this. Speaking of Zach Tui, who plays his 200th game uh, next start, by the way, but he was doing roaming uh, Zach after the game and he caught up with Patrick Dangerfield and he had a drive-by for our good mate, Kane. Was what I did tonight the toughest thing you've ever seen on the field? Yep, I'm looking forward to uh, Cornsy's assessment of it because Kane, he faked it and hit himself. So, no, you were very, you were very special. <laughs> oh, we love that. We love that. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Hey, um, when you play like that, you can't, you can't argue with it, Bill. That's right. Hey, Scotty, a lot of comments. I read social media. A lot of comments on you, how good you're looking. You're brown, you're bronzed, you've got a nice little trim beard. You're looking really good. And you're coaching probably... I know you've been a good coach for a long time. You're nearly coaching at your best. Are you feeling like that? Oh, I, think, I think the team's in pretty good shape. Yeah, I won't speak to the first part of your uh, uh, <laughs> comment, but um, the, the second part... Look, I still feel like I'm improving all the time and um, I think our group's in good shape and mm. um, as it always should be when, when the team's going well, the, the, we should focus on the players and give them the credit. Look good, feel good, coach good. That's yeah. what I reckon, Scotty. Let's have a look at the votes. And I thought Paint Dangerfield, clearly the best Daddy. man on the ground. Stewart. Tommy Stewart controlled it around half back. I thought Daniel set them up brilliantly. And Hayden Crozier, he was hard as anybody the other night. I thought his game, particularly in the first half, was outstanding. Now, Chris, uh, hopefully Stacey from your media department did mention to you that you're sticking around for two segments. No, she didn't. She's out of form at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, if you can find another few moments for us, we'd love to chat to you after the break more. Uh, maybe some beauty tips, preferred moisturiser <laughs> and just uh, life in the bubble. So Chris Scott to join us before we give him a chance to say no. Joining us right after this on the Sunday Footy Show. Whoa. Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Geelong Senior Coach Chris Scott is our special guest live from the team hub on the... I assume you're on the Gold Coast, aren't you, Chris? Southport. Yeah, we sure are. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, early in the piece when there was this congested fixture, uh, you were saying that it might just be something that can be adopted in season 2021 and beyond. Having experienced that now, and you were talking before about managing players and cycling them and what have you, uh, are you still of that view that we can actually do this again? Yeah, I, th I think it's given everyone a, a bit of um, time for reflection and, um, you know, a chance to see that, maybe things could be done a little bit differently. I think there's a couple of components to it. One, you've got to be a little bit careful that we don't take a four or five week period and think that we could do that uh, for a whole season necessarily. Um, and I think the shorter games, um, slightly longer breaks, um, you know, half time, the quarter breaks, et cetera, um, have made a difference. And I think the other part that, you know, has really opened up everyone's eyes is just how good this experience has been for football in Queensland and, and I suspect that it might be a turning point for the national competition and that in and of itself uh, I think is a good enough reason to persist with this sort of idea. Which is obviously great for someone like you to experience firsthand having you know sort of cut your teeth there at the Brisbane Lions so long ago when they were probably giving away tickets at Hungry Jacks and the like. Yeah absolutely I mean I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud Victorian and you know in my mind I was always coming back to Victoria, but Queensland you know, holds a special place in, in my heart. And I think even just for the good of the game, you know, um, you know nationally, um, the game needs to thrive in Queensland. And um, I think it's on the right track. And you know, I can see a, a scenario where we get a whole influx of Victorians um, in a Queensland winter coming up to, to watch some footy. And I, I, again, I think that would just be a terrific thing for not just the clubs here, but the game in general. I'm sure up there they're also loving watching Patrick Dangerfield play, Scotty. And you said recently, or in the last 12 months, that he's, he's been transformational for Geelong and he's changed our club. There were some that critiqued that, saying, well, he hasn't won a premiership in his time at Geelong and all those sorts of things. But I fully understood what you were saying. Can you give us some examples of what he's done 
for you and, and the club and what, he's, what he does away from the two hours we see on weekends? Yeah, well, I guess that you know, my comments there were speaking to the impact he's had over and above you know, his performances on the field, which have been um, outstanding. I mean, I don't necessarily need to argue with anyone that um, wants to critique those comments, but I can't speak highly enough of the person he is. And in a lot of ways, he reflects what we aspire to be uh, as a footy club. He's, um, he's intense and he's a real pro when he gets out there and, and, and plays with uh, vigour. Um, but off the field, he's pretty relaxed and, you know, he's a, he's a fun-loving guy and um, I, I think he just helps the atmosphere around the place and he's a good role model to our younger players in that you don't need to be... Um, you don't need to take yourself too seriously to be a really high performer in this game. I think we're all feeling for the industry and the assistant coaches and, and people losing their jobs. Scotty, you're flying on top of the ladder. Clearly, you're so happy with your coaching structure. Have you had to make those changes yet or is that coming in the next couple of weeks? And how difficult is that going to be if that's the case? Oh, it's going to be really difficult, Kane. We're still a little way from working out exactly where things stand. But we worked really hard through the lockdown period. Um, to retain uh, as many people as we possibly could. And there's been some great sacrifices across the board um, from our people. So I don't think we're in a position to announce it just yet, but um, I think it's a, a fair pointer um, to the future for us that when we were able to get our coaches back, they all came back. Um, you know, we were all stood down for a period of time there, but um, at the first opportunity, we got all our guys back. Um, and again, that took some sacrifices um, you know, from, from them um, across the board. So we're really happy with the stability we've been able to create with our coaching group and, you know, the support I get, um, not just from our coaches, but from our administration is first class. Scotty, you're on the Gold Coast, beaches and sun and the boys that I imagine are getting down to the beach a fair bit. If they all had to get down there and get their rigs out, who is the happiest with their own rigs at the moment? <laughs> Which player? It's a great question. I'm, I'm not sure that um, this guy um, should be the happiest. He's in pretty good nick, but for an older guy, Lockie Henderson um, is a legend. Um, he's very comfortable with the Queensland lifestyle, that's for sure. Uh, so what moisturiser do you use, Scotty? And, and the feathers, they seem to be a bit more thicker. So what are you using? Yeah, that's a great question too. I gave my wife's company, natural supply company, a shameless plug um, good. post-game. On the weekend, so here I go again. Great um, stuff. Guys. Brownie, you'd be a you'd be a, a prime candidate to, yes. to log on. And hey, you got plenty of it, Scotty. I've got plenty of it. Thank you. <laughs> 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 hey, good stuff, Chris. Thanks for staying with us over the two breaks, and uh, all the best for the remainder of the season. Kane, go away, please. <laughs> well, hang on, and you might have got the hint there. We're going to be crossing of Daniel Andrews a little later on. But, uh, Chris, thanks for your time. Good and, on you, uh, Scotty. Good for the remainder of the season. And uh, no uh, keep, gl keep glowing, my friend. Yes. It's uh, an inspiration to all us men. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's always yeah. fun. Thank you. Chris Scott joining us there on the Sunday oh, Footy he's Show. He's in a live. good spot. Yeah. He's in a very good he's spot. He's found his good spot. Yeah, so don't ruin it for him, Damo. Don't take your negativity up there yeah. and sort of unleash on no, those No, there's no greater fan of Chris Scott than, than myself, TJ. What about Brad? Yep, same. <laughs> oh, that was convenient. <laughs> <laughs> That's warm. All right.